Welcome back to Sully's Rods and Customs. Um, I'll get it out of the way. Sorry. So now I'm going to show you how to replace the valley cover on our LS motor, LS engine. Um, first thing that needs to happen is you've got to remove your knock sensors. So on an LS1 uh, or earlier, so 5.7 or earlier, um, knock sensors are in the top of the valley cover here. So um, I showed you in a previous video what the knock sensors look like. There's the plug, there's the rubber bung. That, the knock sensor is usually down that hole there. Um, when you unscrew it, I think I have one over here to show you. There's a knock sensor, it's usually down that hole, screwed into a, it's like a metric coarse thread there, maybe 10 mil thread, 12 mil thread, screwed in there, one there, one at the back. These two knock sensors are in and clipped on. When you unclip them, you, you squeeze the sides and it opens it up and you pop it off. So the uh, best way I've found is once that's down the hole there and you move the bung back, I couldn't move my bungs back because this cable was all damaged and it stopped the bung going back, so I just yanked it out because I wasn't using it again anyway. But um, what I found in the past is if you get a set along those pliers, you can grip down that hole and you can squeeze. And if you look where you squeeze that, it opens up, it opens up the plug, and that allows that that allows that to unclip and come out. So cables off, knock sensors out. If you try this and you haven't removed the knock sensors, <laughs> you'll be in some strife. Um, you'll rip something apart because I'll show you down the bottom of this hole in a second. Knock sensors are down there. I've already undone these um, 10 8mm um, hex head bolts. Um, so yeah, I just use a 10mm impact socket. Used a screwdriver under the front here, and I just popped popped the cover up. So the cover, is, it's not tight in there, but it's it's got some rubber seals in the bottom where the knock sensors go. And you can kind of see them there. These rubber seals here. These ones are quite hard. So once they start leaking, you get a bit of um, you get a bit of oil up in around this chamber here. Um, not so much in Australia, but in American cars, you get a lot of um, a lot of icy water, uh, not, not icy, a lot of salty water go down there because they salt their roads to stop um, the ice, um, to break the ice in the road. I mean, it corrodes it, it's hard to get those knock sensors out, but this popped off really easily. There is a gasket underneath here, I'll show you what it is. It's a aluminium rubberized gasket, so I'll just kick this valley cover plate over there out of the way. Um, here's the gasket. Or the seal, if you like, it's aluminium, aluminium around the edge, and it's rubberized in the middle here. So, I'm going to reuse this one because I'm only doing this as a trial to fit my injection. Um, I'm probably going to do the test run and everything with this, with this on it. Um, just grab a rag, clean it up a bit before I bolt it back down. Wipe off any excess. Oil. Looks like a McDonald's McHappy Day sock from one of the kids. Anybody come in useful for something? With a donation for McHappy Day. And now it's a donation to my keep my hands and engine clean process. Alright, I'll grab the other valley cover, the new one, the billet one. Show you something here. Um, this is made in America, made in USA. ICT billet. It's a really quality piece of gear. I've showed it to you in a previous video. You can see ICT have um, engraved their logo into it. The milling process on the, on the surface finish here is excellent. No burrs in it. Every hole's been counted. 
kind of sunk. Um, gives you some pretty good instructions there. What it doesn't tell you is what torque to torque the bolts up to, but I have that in my um, in my manual anyway. So I'll stick that on top. Actually, I'll do a bit of a comparison between stock and aftermarket. So you've seen how thin that plate is. That is just a thin piece of alloy. If you look at the stock one, it has a chamber here because it has a vacuum source here where it scavenges the um, fumes out of the out of the sump. Any um, bypass from the ignition or the um, the ignition system or or the um, the fuel bypassing passing the pistons. Um, and these are those little bosses that sort of fit down around the bottom of those knock sensor adapters at the bottom there. So it's quite a bulky piece. It's probably taken a big chunk of weight out of the engine as well. I'll just clean my hands up again. Don't really want to get it too messy. Um, and like I said, it comes with some good hardware. It comes with these stainless steel um, counterboard counter sunk in hex um, bolts which all I'll just screw them in manually here for the sake of the video um, then I've got to go and find the, the torque specification that needs to be talking talking the bolts up but I'll talk too much as it is bit of a dead joke there yeah so significant difference in the looks of this valley cover to the stock one I did mention in a previous video that I wasn't going to change this over but it's kind of interfering a bit with my um, my vacuum lines that I just installed under the, the injection runners so I figured I'll get this as neat and tidy as I can plus I don't have to plug off that vacuum port as well I'm going to put a um, Different sort of scavenging system system on this engine to scavenge the fumes out. Got to be really careful here now. These ports here are directly into the cylinder, so if any one of those is open, I drop a bolt down there, and it goes inside the bore. They're just pretty good grade stainless steel bolts. A magnet's not going to get them out. It means pulling the heads off and um, fishing out that way. And if I'm pulling the heads off, I'm just going to rebuild it. So I don't really want to do that right now. I want to get this injection working. And once that's working and I sort of work out all the all the chinks and problems, I will then work on the rebuild process. So to get some of this stuff out of the way, I'll just show you. Oh I haven't talked the bolts down yet, but I'll just show you now how those nut bolts fit on there. There's those vacuum ports that I installed. These will then sit on top of that. And it's nice to be able to see that nice polished bit of alloy underneath there instead of that old dodgy standard item that came with the came on the engine. So uh, look, admittedly you don't see too much of that plate. Once both of these, once both of these um, manifolds are on, but you do see some of it. Oh, wrong side. This one's got to go in. Get back over here. I don't know how I'm going to do this when I have all these painted up and and clean. So you do see some of it. So um, it does look a lot neater. I'll just do a bit of a close-up for you of it. That's how it looks. Looks a lot better than that stock piece and what for 150 bucks or whatever it cost me. It's um, cheap, cheap I think. Yeah, so that's how to change the valley cover on LS1.
Thanks for watching. Remember, like and subscribe if you want to see more. It all helps. Thank you.